My name is Jose Villalobos. I am an interdisciplinary artist that works primarily in sculptural installation and performance. I was born and raised in El Paso, in Ciudad Juarez, uh, in the border, and I am now currently based out of San Antonio. My work encompasses the idea of deconstructing toxic masculinity and looking at modes of machismo and how to navigate these spaces as a queer individual. The installation made out of cowboy hats is titled Sin La S, which translates without the S. So every single hat is this idea of a lineage and how my last name is passed on. So every single hat holds a letter to my last name and it's supposed to spell out Villalobos, but minus the pink hat. The pink hat is a resemblance of who I am as an individual and being queer, a uh, continuation of a bloodline and um, me being queer and being the expectation of doing it for lack of a better term in a traditional manner is kind of what the work is about. So it's about the abrupt, uh, abrupt stop of uh, the continuance of uh, lineage. So the installation on my right hand side, uh, it is an uh, installation made out of belt. Um, it is titled De La Misma Miel. That specific work is ties to the idea of discipline and how um, Growing up as a kid, uh, I was often corrected for uh, maybe my mannerisms, so it was almost like a hit um, with the belt. Uh, you know, I think growing up at the age that I grew up, uh, you know, the belt was something that was used to um, discipline and correct. So also on the belt, instead of them having any type of like the last name, which is traditional with these type of Western belts, it holds uh, homophobic slurs. So it's also this idea of um, how these words and these things um, that you hear that are considered to be wrong is a sense of uh, a negative um, term. So it's, you know, hearing it, I felt like it was always a sense of uh, being hit or being whipped. And behind the belts, uh, they're actually painted pink and have glitter on them. So it's kind of like this idea of something being occult and hidden uh, behind this specific type of uh, negative or slur. These are things that I grew up seeing, right? So it's things that I grew up like seeing my uncles wear, um, you know, like the resin casted uh, belt buckle. I would see a lot of things that were casted in resin, um, especially going into pickup trucks and the shift knob was, uh, you know, usually something made out of resin and usually had a, a, a scorpion. So um, these, yeah, these, I think these motifs that I use in my work are very symbolic to geographic location and what I grew up seeing uh, in the border, right? Between two, two cities, the dynamic is very particular, you know, being from El Paso and Ciudad Juarez, you get to see uh, this idea of two cultures merging, right? And uh, as far as also for the fringes, for an example, um, I, the inspiration of the fringe in the work comes from as a kid when I would go with my mom to visit my grandparents in Ciudad Juarez. Uh, we would go maybe about uh, three or four times a week and uh, we would get onto what's called La Rutera, which is the bus system. So they're like school buses that are painted very brightly and flamboyantly and usually the drivers have an altar up in the front at the top and you would see them made out of uh, things that were very uh, soft very feminine so you would see a lot of kind of um, you know you would see fringe you would see uh, these saints and these photographs were really ornate uh, satin or you would see kind of uh, velvet uh, so it was kind of this decision of like using these um, particular things that I just remember seeing as a kid and for me, it's that it's that process of trying to understand uh, where the masculinity is like almost exerted or overexerted to overcompensate this idea of something um, feminine. So uh, a lot of the things that I do in my work are very, um, it's kind of trying to deconstruct the masculinity behind these objects that kind of carry a history of having power of some sort of power. And um, by doing that, you know, sometimes I either physically deconstruct the object or I alter them so that they create, so new forms are created in a sense. And uh, those new forms are kind of a sense of subverting the idea of that uh, masculine power that that object traditionally and culturally through time has had. For me, the performance is kind of this extension of the work that exists, right? And it's 
this extension of how do we how do we talk about these issues so that other people can understand them rather than people having an interpretation to just a physical object or an installation of sculpture. Some of the work that I do do with performance is very physical and when we start to connect any sense of physicality to anything, we start to have a, a deeper connection because we've all had some type of physical pain in our lives, right? Whether it's stubbing your toe, whether it's um, being tired, whether it's um, having a paper cut, not being able to breathe, holding your breath, so it's things like that that I, I um, use in my in my work as a performance artist to be able to further expand on the importance of um, the statement behind my work. What I want the public to get from my work, or for any from any of this work, actually, is understanding, right? Because we don't sometimes we get so involved with what we're doing that we don't um, take a look around what is happening around us. Uh, for me, it's uh, understanding of the actual issues and the understanding that queer individuals do exist in this space and in this time and we have always been here, right? And uh, for me, especially behind my work, it's the existence of the violence that exists behind um, particular type of attitudes. So uh, for me, uh, it's just kind of at least the start of a conversation, even if it's like a mental conversation that that person may have with themselves.